and welcome to another Campfire session presented by InCamp. I'm your host, Brandon Barlow. Today, I will be speaking with Adam Estes of Knopf Insulation on environmental sustainability in business. Adam is a technical specialist for Knopf and a subject matter expert on everything environmental. When we first started our Campfire sessions, I knew sustainability is something that I really wanted to touch on. And when I started thinking about potential guests, Adam came up first. Uh, yeah, he's he's awesome. I'll, I'll let him give you guys a brief description of himself and a brief description of Kanaw. Adam? Thanks. Uh, my name is Adam Estes, and I am corporate HSC uh, for Kanaw Insulation, uh, the environmental lead. And uh, I was a regulator first before going into consulting and then now coming to industry. So kind of have a view um, from all three sides of the, the triangle, so to speak. Um, thank you, Brandon, for uh, <laughs> the accolades. I will say uh, I'm not an expert on all things environmental. There are there are regs that I don't know, uh, but I appreciate it. Um, Knopf Insulation is a, a fiberglass uh, insulation company, and I've been with them for two years now and just impressed by everything that they do, especially in regards to sustainability. Yeah, absolutely. And please do not let Adam be modest. Uh, he does know if you would ask him something about the environment, um, trust me, he would know regulations offhand. He's just that kind of person. So, so before we kind of dive into this, like the broad term of sustainability focuses on me, the needs of, of the people in the present without compromising the ability for future generations. So specifically talking about environmental sustainability, what does that mean for you and what does that mean for Knopf? Um, well, well, first, let me, since the microphone might have picked up the little reminder there for our meeting, um, you know, working in the pandemic, hopefully my dogs don't start barking because they're here in the <laughs> room. Um, but if anyone hears that, just be aware of interesting times we live in. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I think that... Uh, is a good definition. I, I would probably tweak it a little bit for me personally um, in regards to um, not just providing for the needs in the present, but also changing actions in the present um, so that the commons, um, whatever that might be, uh, as it's being utilized, it doesn't even affect the future. Um, and the reason I say the commons is because sustainability is a, a large concept and it's more than just uh, environmental. You have time, sustainability, business sustainability. Um, so that, that's my personal. When it comes to uh, the environmental sustainability towards your question, um, the reason I, I added that changing actions is that usually people think on environmental is just more uh, like water conservation, CO2, uh, carbon footprint production, those kind of things. And that's not to take away. Those are important aspects. But there's also a larger area of things like source reduction, changing chemicals, making a, a change in that regard. What I usually tell people, um, since we have a really strong uh, reuse program with our water, is that um, if we were, you know, the more technology we develop, that we're using uh, fresh water more efficiently so that we never have a shortage, that's great. But if we're not looking at the fact that we're putting something that could contaminate the water into the, the stream, then we've achieved nothing. So it's not just usage, it's also changing actions. Um, at Knopf, uh, they have a, a very long history of sustainability, uh, really focused on product sustainability, but also advocating for uh, building energy code improvements and uh, recycling programs as well. And I'm sure I'll get into that later on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you talk about Knopf like, and sustainability at, in general. So why is it why is it so important? Um, well, I mean, the it, it's super important. Because most people are going to look at, you know, sorry, my things looking up here. Most people are going to focus on just the monetary aspects of it. And, you know, it, you can make an argument for there is a moral and existential imperative as well. But from a business perspective, it, it's more than just those two things as, um, as well. You know, companies that have that time efficiency are the ones that have, you know, revolutionized the market when they think of an innovative approach and then can foster and build upon that. Um, the environmental sector is just continuing to grow and companies that get in on that will be able to bring that into where they have improved upon things and it will allow them to excel. Um, so, you know, that was a long way of saying it. Um, the short answer would be that, you know, we're not in the roaring 1920s, the 2020s, 
So we need to be more, a little more focused on ecological needs because we've learned so much about them. Yes, absolutely. I really like that. Yeah, that is, it, it, we are no longer in the roaring 1920s. This is definitely the 2020s. <laughs> um, it, and we talk about the benefits of becoming uh, an environmental sustainable business. I, kn- I know there's a couple, you know, there's the regulatory burden, but what exactly is, in your opinion, um, you know, what are those benefits of becoming an environmental sustainable business? Well, uh, for me personally, um, I, and I think a lot of other people would add on as well, um, it's pride in what you do. Um, you know, most people would like to have a career where they're happy with what they're doing and proud of their company. Um, and can all fulfills that for me with sustainability. Um, and I think other companies can benefit from that as well. But if you want to take just dollars and cents, then, you know, money is the one that jumps out. It's the economic factor of a lot of these things. So from that perspective, you know, the more you can reduce your regulatory burden through sustainability measures, like changing um, source reduction, things like that, changing chemicals to ones that are not so toxic, um, that's a cost savings. But on the macro level, you have stakeholder investment. Um, you know, stakeholders and investors are looking more and more towards what are green businesses. And that's only going to continue in the future. Um, you know, I, I, I think more and more are looking towards requiring that of the companies that they invest in. And it's, you know, it's been 50 years since the 1970s. And the environmental movement has proven it's not going away. So it's only uh, in a company's interest to start getting more and more on board and figuring out what they can do um, to highlight that. So it, it sounds like Knopf kind of started internally, kind of grassroots level uh, moving up. But let's say that I wanted to uh, partner with someone. Is, is, is that something you can do to achieve sustainability? Definitely. I mean, I think... Vendor relations is an area that's overlooked in sustainability because it helps kind of create that ripple effect um, of little minor movements that can build to something bigger. Like I said, everyone typically thinks of, you know, water reduction, water conservation, uh, carbon footprint. But a lot of those are very high aspirational things that you might get stuck in the weeds on. So small minor changes um, have a big ripple effect, like I said. And when you combine it with your vendors, it just increases and magnifies. I mean, what we're doing right now is an example of that. Both of our uh, respective clients will see this podcast. Um, but when you're working with your vendors, you know, the more you can challenge them to promote sustainability, whether that's are they going to increase recycling capabilities? Um, if they have a service they give for you, is there a way to recycle it? Um, if they are providing a product, do they have any Red List free products for you? Which for those who aren't familiar, uh, the Red List is a list of chemicals that uh, because of their toxicity businesses are trying to move them out of the marketplace so things like that just engaging on what can you do um, will help you move that needle just a little bit which all those little things can help start building a sustainable program because when you're talking about sustainability whatever program you build itself also has to be sustainable you don't want to lose exactly what you do yeah so you mentioned those vendor relations so I'm assuming when you're trying to choose a vendor, let's say it's for waste. Are you looking at their sustainability goals? Are you kind of looking at what they're doing um, in the public, uh, you, you know, as far as coming out and saying, you know, this is what we're doing, like you said, that red list. Is it something that you factor in when you're choosing a vendor? Absolutely. Um, and, it, and it goes to more than just choosing a vendor. I mean, once they they are chosen as well, you're looking into what they can provide for you. Um, a good example is that, yeah. As most businesses would, we have uh, a review process for any SCS that's going to come into our company. You know, most of our vendors are already set up, but when a new product is coming in and we're looking at what's in there, if I see something that, hey, that's going to increase our regulatory burden, or this is just not a, um, a risk I'm comfortable with on the environmental or safety side, since safety, environmental, all of HSC reviews jointly, um, we'll push back with the vendor and say, what other options do you have? You know, I understand we're purchasing it for these things, but what else is in your catalog? Um, just those simple questions start help driving, and then they kind of know the process. So it tends to phase out, out those chemicals we want to stay away from because they already know that's not going to get through. What they're going to say, is there something else you can give me? Um, sometimes you can't, but just even asking the question is a, a start. It's those small little things that build and build and build. 
Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It's kind of, you know, businesses pushing on other businesses to make the right choices. So right. sounds like you guys got a good handle on, you know, as you guys build out your program. So what are your Knopf sustainability goals? I know those are people usually do them five years out. Uh, what are some of your goals and how are you guys approaching sustainability? Uh, well, like you said, you know, we've built um, and they have a long history. So um, Knopf, you know, I, I mentioned product sustainability was kind of their, their big key benchmark. What we did was we innovated from a phenol formaldehyde resin um, to a bio-based resin. And that was one of my statements of, you know, changing actions can have a big effect and help with sustainability. So we removed two toxicities um, out of our uh, product line, which dropped us off of several environmental uh, things that we're no longer subject to, as well as, you know, helping the environment. So the, just that trickle had plenty of effects after that. Um, recycling initiatives, trying to build up more of that. I paid off in spades. Um, and on the, the more recent level, what we have been doing is um, I just recently um, filed an application for our Michigan plant with Michigan's Pollution Prevention Partners to become one of their the partners with the state of Michigan. And we're doing that by you know, up creating our pollution prevention equipment and increasing our response time to environmental alarms to try to reduce our emissions. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to repeat this multiple times, this ripple effect, that action, which hopefully we will achieve it for 2021 and become a recognized partner with Michigan. Um, but that action kind of created a ripple effect for the rest of the company. Now, all of the plants are, um, we've created kind of baselines of how quickly are we responding to our environmental alarms with the goal of, Let's speed this up so that we can reduce our emissions across all of our plants, um, even when there's no, you know, state incentive that we're working with as well. On uh, Earth Day of this year, we launched um, most recent sustainability initiative, and the response was just kind of overwhelming, which I'm going to talk about later on with how you want to bring in all kinds of people. But there are four key objectives, which was putting our people and the community first, achieving zero carbon delivering a circular economy, and shaping tomorrow's built environment. Built because we're a fiberglass uh, manufacturing company. So all of those kind of come together for why we have a motto at the company calling I am Knopf. Um, it really just kind of sums it up. And, you know, as a company, our product is literally something that helps uh, energy conservation and heat consumption. So right. we have, it's, it's completely in our interest to try and innovate and make sure that this is a better product over and over and over. Um, the company slogan previously was it's time to save energy, which, you know, it, it highlights what I just said and why mm -hmm. that's important. But uh, recently it was changed to uh, for the world we live in, which I mean, just listening to those two, you can uh, hear the, the, the change in tone and why it's a, a core value uh, for Knopf. And yet I, I wish I could just play the little marketing video of when they announced it because the marketing team did a very good job. It was very epic. I was expecting the Avengers to come out. At one <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a, it's a big part of our business. Okay. Yeah. That is, so, so it sounds like this is something that is, that is a part of your culture. So not only are you guys talking about this on Earth Day, but this is something that you guys are continuing to talk you know, about throughout the year, correct? Correct. Yep. Perfect. All right. You also mentioned uh, P2. Um, I really wanted to uh, talk about the P2 program because we have one in Indiana as well. Um, and we recently joined last year. It's been great for us. Um, I look forward to those. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I look forward to those quarterly meetings every year or every quarter, I should say. And it, it's just good to see how many large companies, small companies are there in support to going after the same goal. So it's, uh, yeah, I commend you guys for doing that in the state of Michigan. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So we all agree that environmental sustainability is something that all business should be taking a look at. But as you and I know, unfortunately, this is not always true. So if you're a business owner, what is the first step you can take if you want to even look into trying to create an environmental sustainable goals? Uh, definitely getting commitment from upper management. Um, that's, I would say, the, the first key thing that you have to hit. Um, there's others that we'll um, discuss later. But, you know, sustainability is very similar to uh, safety or customer centricity or really any kind of initiative a company is going to take. You know, leadership has to be involved and really living uh, and talking 
walking the walk because it's just going to be from the top down. People are going to emulate what they see in leadership. So once you have that, you can move forward and start kind of brainstorming. As, as you said earlier, with the P2 conferences and just the, the routine discussion of these things, once you have the upper management support, then the next phase would really be brainstorming at all levels of the corporation because you're going to find people have different interests and different viewpoints of what is sustainability. And you don't want to exclude whatever anyone's interest is because you're going to need that engagement, um, especially if you want to hit kind of aspirational targets. You know, some people might just be looking at, I want to plant some trees. Um, others are going to have, you know, the more innovative ideas of just, you know, let's, can we change a whole product line towards something that still works and doesn't have this chemical? You want to have all of those because you're going to get um, a myriad of different responses that range from, you know, something you can very easily do and still have an effect versus things that are like, well, this will pay off in spades, but it's going to take a lot more effort. Yeah. Um, and you need to get all of that together before you figure out how you're going to proceed further. And write them all down so you don't forget. <laughs> so um, you might not have been a part of this at Knopf, but as you start to assess, is that kind of the first step? I want to make sure that I assess what exactly I'm kind of, what are my goals? What are, what's even practical? How much effort is put into that upfront work? Uh, I mean, you, you definitely need to have effort into it because otherwise it's not going to be successful. But I know whenever you're talking about putting a lot of effort in things that can scare people off because there's everything else that needs to be done in the business to keep it going. Correct. So my earlier statement of your sustainability initiative has to itself be sustainable. Um, that's why I would caution, you know, having those aspirational targets, those are something you need to have on there so that you keep challenging yourself. Um, sort of like with safety and goal zero, you know, goal zero is possible, but once you get there, you don't stop. It's a constant effort. Um, and so the reason I bring that up to, to tie it back to sustainability um, <laughs> is that, you know, I might not have been there from the start with some of the things that Knopf has done, but as a new perspective, when I joined, there were already things where they said, hey, can you look at this and just, is there something different we could do? You know, so part, part of that, you know, SDS review, that was something new that I did. Reaching out to Michigan and starting those kind of things, those are new things that I brought to the table. So you're going to have that with any new person or just when you're building your first team. And that's why I say you need to get all different levels because people are going to have not only the different interests, but what they do for that company, they're going to be focused on something that you might not even been thinking about. Oh yeah, we could change this thing that would yield a sustainable result, whether it's a source reduction, a more conserving energy um, or something other, or just planting trees, you know, that never hurts. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, I should have mentioned yeah, our customer centricity team that's that's one of the things that we do through combined actions. And I think this year we've planted a total of 51 trees. So that by itself, I think, equates to something like 11 tons of CO2. So you know, that never hurts, even if you might think it's just you know, the tree huggers route. You know, go with that if you can't think of something else or the other things that you're working in are, are just too aspirational at this point. Yeah, it, it... It's funny you said that because we, we, when we first started in camp and we started doing the tier two reports, we made an initiative that for every tier two report, we're going to plant a tree. So I think we're up to, you know, some 7,000, 8,000 trees, but there it, you go. it yeah. adds up. It, it, it it's does. something small you can do that make a huge difference. Yep, definitely. And I so, think you guys also did for Earth Day. I remember. Yes. Was like one who comments. So I made sure to comment because so I was like, "All right, you guys go plant a tree." <laughs> yes, for sure. I think we got fifty-one comments. I think we did fifty-one trees as well. Funny that number. Right. Us. <laughs> we were just talking about this today. It's funny. Okay, so um, you, you guys are on the larger end. Environmental sustainability. It, it's not just a one size fits all. So each business needs to be clear on why they are making that effort. And what it hopes to accomplish in the scale of the commitment, like how do companies measure success? And that goes back to my statement of wanting to make sure that you have that engagement after you got that, you know, upper management. You know, this is going to be cliche, um, but I am a data driven person. So key performance indicators, KPIs, those are useful. But I mentioned them kind of tongue in cheek because on the one hand, there'll be a way for you to put up some numbers and kind of gauge where you're going. But all too often, I see sustainability being just, this is how many gallons of water we saved. This is how long we got the lights off. Not that those are bad, um, but all too often, I feel that's the, the bare minimum of what people put into it. They 
that's what they do and say, hey, look, we're sustainable. Just like safety, it's something that you need to constantly be working on. So KPIs, while helpful, unless you gauge them towards exactly what your actual goal commitment is, they're not going to tell the full story. And even if they do, don't be afraid if the numbers are bad. Um, I think one of the good things with KPIs, since I just trashed them a little bit, is that you know, they let you look at where are things going. And if the numbers are bad, then that's when you kind of realign and revise your plan of attack. You know, were, was your goal too, uh, too aspirational? In which case, scale back, start small and build up. Um, or if it was too easy, then the reverse of that, you know, go aim for something higher. So just be looking at those, but don't rely on this is all the end all and be all. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I can, I can see it working both ways. I can see a company being, uh, you know, very discouraged if they're trying to set at goals that are just, just not in their league or something they can't achieve in the next five or ten years. Um, it's something you really have to balance whether you're a small company or a large company. Definitely, and all too often, I mean, this also was probably going to be cliche, um, but relating it to either a diet or a fitness program, you know, you need to be focusing on what's good for you and not comparing yourself to what other people can do. I mean, I mentioned something with Knopf about, you know, our innovation with our product, and we're very proud of that. Um, but at the same time, I could point to companies that have achieved, you know, zero landfill. I'm very jealous of that. However, <laughs> I don't want to hold up. You know, there are different challenges that they would face with changing a product line versus also challenges we face towards moving to something that we do want to do. All businesses are going to have like all these different items that are aspirational and some are going to be easier for them to achieve and others are going to be harder. Um, it's it, maybe once you've got that upper management support, that um, enthusiasm and that brainstorming of ideas is to then kind of do a Venn diagram where you have, you know, on one side, you know, engagement, what people are interested in, um, another side, ease, and then economic factors. And where those three intersect, that's where you want to start and try to make KPIs for that. Then as you start hitting off that, you know, little smaller triangle, start expanding into all the three different areas. That would probably be my best recommendation. So uh, you kind of mentioned the KPIs. So let's say you guys have set a, a goal in five years that you just don't meet. What do you do next? Do you, do you continue and try to hit that? Do you set another goal? Do you make it, you know, what is your idea? Let's say not, not can off, let's say a small business wants to start off and they don't meet one of their KPIs or a couple of them. What would you do? Uh, first, you know, kind of do like a five whys, similar to safety on mm -hmm. why can't you succeed? What was the roadblock? Was it a lack of commitment or just too difficult to do? Or did you overlook a major thing that made it impossible for you to achieve that? Um, and then revise your plan of attack. You know, I, I don't like that. That's where I, you know, let me praise and then let me bash KPIs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're useful, but they shouldn't be the end all be all because, you know, relating back to safety, what if you don't hit your mark? Does that mean you stop working on safety? No. Right. Same thing with if I do hit goal zero or zero landfill or, you know, zero carbon footprint. Am I done now? No, you, you got it. You, once you achieve it, it's just a constant thing. Very much like training for a marathon. You know, yeah. you don't just give up once you're done. Once you've achieved it, okay, you know you can do that. So now keep pushing yourself harder. Again, being cliche, but it it fits. <laughs> so, so in your opinion, I'm really glad you said that. Like, uh, to kind of start off, I'm really glad you said that. Just because KPIs. It's not for bashing. Like this is all <laughs> heading in the right direction. So it, it, right. it's really good. So if you, so what's your best advice for a business? And they're doing this for the very first time. They're trying to set those sustainability goals. What would you, what would you advise them to start with? Like which, I mean, it's going to vary by business by business. Yeah. Um, definitely for sure. You know, my, my background being the environmental, I would approach it of, all right, what are we uh, subject to and why are we subject to then? What can we change that would get us out of these different items? You know, are, can we reduce our waste amount? Can we change a source so that we don't produce this waste? Can we change a source so that we don't have this emission? Um, you know, how much recycling do we do? How much of our recycling compared to our regular waste? Um, you know, where is our waste going? And why is it going there? If it's, you know, if it is a typical recycling, why hasn't it moved over into the recycling as opposed to just going straight to the landfill? Um, or 
you know, looking at different water usage. So that would be my approach because that's my background. But yeah. that's why I say you need to uh, bring in different groups from different levels and different backgrounds because they're all going to sit and bring something to the table that you didn't think about. Sort of like the example you gave with MCAMP of, you know, promoting that goal for each tier two done, you plant a tree. You know, our customer centricity group did a similar situation with, you know, the more activities we do around, around being more available to our customers and providing a better product, the more tr- trees we're going to plant. You know, that's an example right there of just bridging two different core values, but also promoting them. I wouldn't have thought of that because I told you, like, this is how I would have sat down. But obviously, a marketing person came to the table and said, well, this is a way we can motivate people like Adam. <laughs> um, so you're just going to get, you know, the more people at the table and not bashing ideas, you need to just let that brainstorming. But that's where that Venn diagram comes from, because your ideas will be all over the place. Some need to stay aspirational, to challenge yourself. Others need to be quick hits of, yes, we can get this done. And then others are just, you know, it might open up a realm of possibilities you weren't thinking about. That, that, going back to that statement I said earlier of the ripple effects. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I tried to give a concrete <laughs> answer. Yeah, no, no, it, it really does. I, and one thing I was knowing you and how technical you are, I was like, so let's say, um, let's say you found something that, hey, uh, we can replace this chemical X with this chemical Y. Is that something you do research on? How are you getting this information to say, hey, maybe if we use, you know, this chemical instead of this one, um, is that something that you get from your vendors? Is that something you're doing your own research or company? How's Kanaf kind of doing that? Well, it's a collaborative effort because despite the the nice accolades you gave me, I don't know everything. (laughs) So um, in the case of like when we're doing the SDS review, you know, that's something pretty easy for me. I don't have to do research. I can just simply say, do you have another product that meets what we need that doesn't have this chemical? Simple, easy, right then and there. And that's part of me doing my job. But where we have, here's a new uh, process line coming on or something that's, you know, I don't have any expertise in other than, you know, what it does for us on the environmental side. You know, that's where someone on the team could say, well, we could use this product. And then I'll be going, can I see what that SDS or I had no idea to do that. Or maybe if I think it can be removed, then I need to ask, what do we use this for before I can really give a solution of how we could get it out of an area of environmental? Um, Another aspect, actually, um, one of our plants was replacing uh, valves frequently just because they use them up so much. So the plant researched along with our procurement team of going to our vendors and saying, you know, what other valves are there and why are we using this one? In that course, um, I don't know all the details of the story, but in the course of that investigation, they were able to come up with a new valve that didn't degrade as quickly. Um, and not only did that save us money because we weren't replacing it all in all the time, um, but it also came up with a new option for us. Um, so that was just a team of individuals. And one can make the argument that was just good common business sense um, mm. or it was customer centricity since we were engaging with a um, one of our vendors and they were serving us um, a, a good product. But I would also argue that it's sustainability. Maybe it didn't have an environmental aspect, but you know, saving money. Well, actually, I would say because we didn't have to get rid of all these broken valves um, going to the landfill. So definitely, I guess one would say there was, was an environmental one there. So that's an example in my same of, you know, you might have, have all the answers, but that's why you need the team and start asking the questions of why do I use this? You know, is there another option? Just what you know. So for a company who has it started kind of diving into this, are there any downsides? Is there some money upfront commitment? Um, if you're weighing that as a small, smaller company, is this something that is insurmountable? Is it something that you should think about when, as you move forward into sustainability goals? I mean, I think companies can make mistakes for sure, um, but I don't think it's insurmountable. I think if your approach is, as I laid out, of sitting down with a group of people, having upper management support and getting ideas. And if you're a small company, you know, maybe you're just seven people in a building. Okay, well, at some point, you're probably going to have a meeting. In that meeting, is anyone interested in doing this? And, you know, Jane Doe is very committed to recycling. So she says, why aren't we recycling? You know, again, you don't want to compare 
company of seven people to you know a company like Amazon. You know, they're just apples to oranges. So focus on what you can do and those small things, um, and it should hopefully allow you to grow into more aspirational. And if all you can think of is the aspirational targets, that's okay too. That's why I say write them all down. You know, have them available to look at, and then put together the Venn diagram, and then if they're truly all aspirational ones than just what is the small little steps I can make because if you do come in with okay I'm a seven person company and here's all the things we want to do and I'm now hire an eighth person whose job is to do only this stuff I hope you can you know but more than likely that is a route where you will you would fail um, so it all just depends okay so one of the themes that I've been hearing from you is that really it's a collaborative effort it, it can't just be one person and it has to start with you know, the higher ups or it has to come from the top down. I mean, I, I think it doesn't have to come from the top down. If the idea comes from the bottom up, that's great. But I think when that happens, you need to get upper management on board. It's much harder to change an organization yourself than having leadership. And this is something we believe in. We are you know, emphasizing it and we want everyone to get on board. You're going to be able to change minds much faster um, having that support than if you're doing it by yourself. Yes, that, that I 100% agree with that. <laughs> if you have an idea, it's all good. And even if your whole department is all with it, but upper management isn't, it probably probably isn't going to work. So this has all been great information, Adam. And if you're trying to start your sustainability program and you're just looking for, hey, I need eight bullet points, six bullet points, what is a simplified roadmap for implementation? Um, well, sounding like a broken record, <laughs> upper management support, um, then the brainstorming, you know, brainstorming ideas, activities, um, interest level, methods to measure, all of that, just getting that information, you know, you want to have an idea before you even start trying to put together the, you know, how am I going to achieve it? Once you have all that, store the ideas, um, and then implement manageable steps. That's that's the key word, the manageable steps. If your goal is you know, zero landfill, zero carbon footprint, you know, great, I am on board, but you're going to need some kind of stepwise way to get there. Those are very aspirational targets. Um, And then maintain those, those manageable steps, you know, start documenting what you're doing, doing that incremental small change, it might lead to the aspirational real quick, you know, you never know just how impactful something might have. But even if it's those small steps, then by doing that, you basically, that's the step where that you're kind of in that loop because each time you're doing that, you then want to promote it, um, get more engagement, bring in new ideas, keep that circular going because it keeps building momentum on itself. Um, the next step would then be reviewing new ideas and then just growing that sustainability program as your time, funds, abilities, et cetera, you know, permits. Um, if you're a massive corporation that has the capability department devoted to that great then you know that's awesome but if you're back to that you know seven person company then that's where you kind of you know it needs to be manageable so that you don't lose on your first swing kind of thing yeah absolutely and and this is something that is that can be fun so let's say that you haven't got all the buy-in or you've got a couple people who think this is a waste of time um one of the things i did read is to celebrate the wins you agree with that yes absolutely i mean that's Positivity is key, which yes. <laughs> uh, I know is ironic coming from me because I'm a pessimist. Um, but you know, when you're working towards these things, you, you got to be positive and celebrate those successes. I mean, um, that's how we got started with you know, let's go ahead and you know try to become a, a Michigan Pollution Prevention Partner, and just making people aware of that, you know, it helps foster that pride. And um, as I said earlier, you know pride in what you do and your company are things that I think most people, especially nowadays, are seeking for for more and more. So if you don't exactly necessarily enjoy the job itself, but you have this avenue to help promote change, hopefully then that gives you some more drive and, you know, more reason why this is why I do what I do. And this is why I'm part of the company and I'm part of. Perfect. Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. do you have anything no else you kind of want to hit on or talk about or kind of promote freaking off before we get off? Um, I, I just say that, you know, I'll, I'll use our slogan that this is why I am can off. Mm-hmm. Hopefully uh, made some people proud and hopefully all of our 
rather aggressive goals uh, we, <laughs> we need. But if 2020, uh, 2021 comes around and we haven't met them, that's okay too, because you know it's just like goal zero. We just constant work in progress. Absolutely. Yes. Companies like yours should be celebrated. I really appreciate your time, Adam. And thank you guys for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, just put it, put something in the comments, uh, either myself or Adam, we can get back with you if we have time. But anyway, thank you for joining us and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.